Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Serbia, which is a Russian or an ally of Russia, finds itself in a very strange circumstance. And that is, from November 1st, will be left without Russian oil. It seems like Serbia somehow have, has to respect the European Union's embargo or preferential embargo and we'll see um, what kind of options it has. So this article comes from Republic World from today, August 22nd, 2022. Serbia to be without Russian oil from November 1st. President Aleksandr Vucic stated, well, and I'm quoting, what are we going to do without electricity, oil? And quote, the president remarked, stressing that there will be no oil for Serbia from November 1. Serbian President Aleksandr Vucic has said that Belgrade will not be able to import Russian oil from November 1st. According to the president, there will be no oil for Serbia from November due to restrictions imposed against Russia. And uh, from November 1st, there will be no Russian oil for us we will be under sanctions, end quote, due to restrictions on supplies from Russia, Vucic said in an address to the citizens. Russian oil is received by Serbia through tankers in the Adriatic Sea and then by pipeline through Croatia. So they depend, they are a, a landlocked country, have no access to the Adriatic Sea, nothing. The only thing that they have, they have the Danube River. Earlier in June, Aleksandr Vucic has stated that Serbia needed to find an alternative to Russian oil due to European Union sanctions against oil tankers deliveries from Russia. He had hinted that Serbia could only receive the oil from the Janaf Adriatic pipeline from the port of Omi, Omisalj in Croatia. Previously, Vucic said that Serbia will not be able to import Russian oil due to the sanctions import imposed by the EU against Russia. Alexander Vucic emphasized that other alternatives like buying oil from Iraq will be more expensive than purchasing Russian oil and it could lead to a loss of $600 million. It's okay. They will help you as they help Ukraine. <laughs> Keep dreaming. So, $600 million a year. In July, Aleksandr Vucic had also suggested that Serbia could sign an agreement with Russia to take over the NIS, if necessary, during the sanctions. In June, European Union Council adopted the sixth package of sanctions with bans the purchase of import of crude oil and certain petroleum products from Russia. The restrictions will come into effect within six months for crude oil and within eight months for other refined petroleum products. According to a press release issued by the EU, temporary exemptions from the embargo have been given for imports of crude oil by pipeline for those EU nations who have no other alternatives due to their geographic situation. Russian oil supply to Slovakia resumes, so Slovakia gets it. <laughs> Meanwhile, the oil supply from Russia to several European countries, restart, countries restarted on August 10th after the issue of our payments for imports were resolved. That is the transit through that friendly country called uh, <clears throat> Ukraine. You didn't pay Ukraine for the transit? No oil for you. Those guys are not like, you know, give us everything. We give you everything back. Contra cost. Pay. Well, such friends. So it says that Richard Sulik in a Facebook post announced, which he is a Slovakia's economic, uh, economy minister, uh, announced that oil has reached Slovakia, according to AP Associated Press. Russian state pipeline operator Transneft on Tuesday, August 9, said that the oil shipments via the southern branch of the Druzba have been uh, halted. The pipeline operator blamed EU sanctions for the halt of the oil supply 
it further added that the supply for oil continues to operate from Belarus to Poland and Germany. So certain countries will have oil, certain countries will not have oil. Can you guess what countries will have oil? Yes, the ones that are, that are a little bit higher on the food chain, which is Germany, maybe France, Italy, and Austria, all these countries. But um, I don't know where Switzerland gets its oil, but we'll find out. So I'm sorry for the Serbs, but I'm pretty sure they will uh, find a way to get it uh, either uh, via Russian oil somehow through India or something, or uh, maybe, you know, they will be reimbursed by the European Union, but I don't hold my breath on that one because I know how uh, they treat friends and how they treat uh, not friends. <laughs> it's just that um, these economies, and if you talk about economies, the economies have no soul. You know, they don't get cold, you know, they don't get hungry, but you deal with people that are affected by these sanctions. So I'm looking at uh, you know, Hippocrates, you know, how do you want to call it, a pledge, do no harm. So instead of, uh, you know, it's already bad, now you make it even worse. So if the war in Ukraine is a bad thing, you make it worse for your own population that is not even uh, responsible for what's going on over there. You punish uh, innocent people. That's what you do. And unfortunately, the decisions are made up there and people are hurt and uh, you say okay I'm an adult but you deal with children you deal with old people who barely can make it with their pensions I mean an adult is uh, you know reacting differently to uh, certain shortages but they still are vulnerable uh, groups what are you gonna do with them even with the children you have they have parents to protect them but an old person doesn't have anybody or anything but they don't care, don't care. And they can, you know, nicely talk about this and nicely talk about that and pledge allegiance to the whatever values and so on they uh, pretend to profess and uphold. The reality in the territory is different. And there is, I don't like you, I impose you, I impose something to you that you have to follow, like the sanctions. And it's against your own will. What is this? Do you have anything to do with European Union? Yeah, you want to go there? You want to go to those guys, they're going to tell you what to do? Well, good luck then. Good luck. If you would not be part of anything with the European Union, what, are you, what would you do? You would not take orders and they would place sanctions on you. So that is uh, blackmail and threats. That's how these guys operate. Blackmail and threats. And if you're a little bit naughtier than usual, they will uh, uh, show you how a regime change is played. Uh, first, they send you some videotapes from uh, previous uh, movies <laughs> that they had in Iraq and, and other areas. And they're going to show you how well that went. And then probably going to change your mind and say, OK, whatever you want me to do. Yeah, And you want to be part of that. I wouldn't. That's why I have to be independent but globalization makes everybody interdependent. And then you ask, why about, I mean, I'm dependent on the Brussels? On Brussels, who's there? Who are those guys? And who tells them what to do? Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.